Hello everybody, it's me, the War Hipster here, coming at you with a different type of hobby video today because, well, as you can see, there is no primed model in front of me. There is no contrast paint gonna be used in this video. No, today we are doing some building. Specifically, we are doing some magnetizing. Yes, that is what we are doing today. We are magnetizing some Dire Avengers and I put a post out on Instagram asking if people would be interested in this type of content and it turns out you very much are. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Now we are going to be magnetizing some Dire Avengers and well specifically the Exarch as this is a commission and our commission customer wishes to have all of his Exarchs magnetized with all of the weapon options. So before we begin we're going to gather all of our materials. The first thing we're going to need is our Exarch's body. There it is, as you can see. Not a lot more has been done to this other than the legs and the torso and, well, this kind of back tabard on the back. It's a very important part of the leg construction, well, of the body construction. I built this about four hours ago, giving it a lot of time to just sit and make sure that it's nice and secure. You don't want to do this too quickly after having just built the body, because otherwise the torso section will start to peel away and it makes it a little bit harder to do the magnetizing with it. So, as you say, we've got this cured body just here. So that's our first material. The next material seems fairly academic, but we need our sprues. Yes, yes we do. We need specifically our weapon sprues. So for example, on the Dire Avenger, we've got the Shimmer Shield here, sword, we've got the glaive, we've got the two shuriken catapults, and the shuriken pistol there as well. So we're going to need to have those on hand because that's what we're going to be magnetizing. I'm just going to pop those just there. Like that. So we've got our body, we've got our weapons on the sprue. What we're also going to need, because we're going to be clipping them off, is we need a pair of clippers. I've got these, it's a pair of Citadel clippers, very well worn, as you can tell, very old now. These come in the Citadel paints and tools box for Age of Sigmar and 40k. They're very, very cool. They're very, very small. And well, they're kind of included with the paints. It gives you a lot of precision clipping. That's why I prefer these than the big ones, but you know, have whatever clippers you like. What we're also gonna need is a hobby knife. I've got a Citadel one here. This is gonna be used for kind of cleaning off any like additional plastic that we don't want, but also for the actual magnetizing procedure. You're going to want some magnets, funnily enough. Here they are. We've got three by one magnets, three by one neodymium magnets. Uh, I will put a link in the description to where these came from. They're from Amazon, very easy to get hold of. They're very diddy, as you can see. Three by one, they're three millimeters in diameter and one millimeter thickness. This is very useful for doing our Dire Avengers, particularly on such slender bodies. So that's why we've got these tiny little magnets. You're gonna want a minimum of two for the body, and then you're gonna to want two for each weapon options. So there's the first lot, the two shuriken catapults. We've got the glaive and the shimmer shield, and we've got the sword and the shuriken pistol. So all in all, you're going to need two, four, six, eight magnets per Dire Avenger Exarch. I don't anticipate that that's gonna stay there. <laughs> the other thing we're going to need is a Sharpie or any kind of felt tip pen, whichever you like. I'm just gonna use this to mark which side we're gonna be using. We need a pin vise. I've got this little one. This again is another Amazon uh, Spectacular and well, it's just very simple. It's not very expensive, it's very cheap, but it does the trick because we're gonna to need to be able to drill into our model. And with that in mind, we're gonna need two drill bits. So this specific one, again, I'll put a link in description, comes with 49 pieces. It's a lot of drill bits, but we've basically got really big ones that you don't get with the Citadel one. So just like that one there, very easy to use. You just twist it in like that. Very nice, but we're also going to use a small, slightly smaller one as well. So once you've collected all of your materials, make sure you've got them all on hand like this before you. 
you're ready to go. Oh, last but not least, we of course need some super glue. I'm using some Gorilla Glue, Gorilla Super Glue. I quite like it. It's nice, it's got a slow application, so it's always useful so you don't explode super glue everywhere. But of course, use whatever super glue brand you desire. So, now that we've got all of our stuff, we've got our super glue, we've got our knife, we've got our clippers, we've got our drill, our little pin vise, we've got our magnets, we've got our Sharpie, and we've got the model. It's time to get started. So, make sure you've gathered all of your stuff, and then we'll be right back. And of course, naturally, I forgot two things. We are also going to require a mold line remover and some plastic glue because, well, we're building a model after all. <laughs> of course, the mold line remover isn't, you know, 100% uh, necessary, but it is one of the best tools ever invented for building models. So I would wholeheartedly recommend that you pick one up. If you don't have one, uh, this is the one that you can buy just on its own. But if that doesn't tickle your fancy, you can always pick up from one of the little Citadel tools, paints and tools. You can pick up one of these little bad boys, which is exactly the same thing. It just comes included in this set. It's very, very cool. You see, one has been loved a lot more than the other. <laughs> so with that now aside, we're going to get into the magnetizing. The place we're going to start is on prepping our Exarch's body. And well, we need our drill for this, our little pin vise. And we're going to use the smaller drill bit first. And this is because we want to kind of give ourselves a guide hole. And it actually makes it a lot easier when using the slightly larger drill, drill bit. And it's reasonably simple, as you can see, I've already done it there. What we're going to do is just going to take the drill and then we're just going to, in the middle of the ball joint, just in here, we're just going to make contact like this and we're just going to lightly apply the pressure and start drilling it round till we feel it bite in like that and just go until it's nice and smooth should just be like that just wiggling around with zero resistance like so now as for the drill bit size you can use any drill bit size i'm not entirely sure what size this is i'm sure it's printed on the drill bit itself somewhere. I can't see it though. But basically, what you want to do is you want to look at the diameter of the drill piece there like that. And you want to look at your magnets as well. And just kind of, when you just stick them together, just make sure it's like sort of roughly, just eyeball it, roughly about half the size, maybe even a quarter of the size of the magnet itself, which is important because what we're now going to do is we're going to get rid of that smaller dry bright, uh, drill bit just for the moment. And we're going to take our biggest dry bit. Dry bit, drill bit. Good, goodness me. So, very easy what we're going to do here. Just to test that we've got the right size. We're just going to drill, get them together. And just using our fingers, we're just going to run it along. And make sure it's roughly the same size. Which in this case, it is. You can see as well, if I do that, you shouldn't see a lip on the drill piece itself. We want it to just be, like I said, about the same size as the drill piece. Again, in the set that will be linked in the description below, this will be the biggest one that's in the pack, basically. But do just make sure to test it just before you do this, because otherwise you might drill a slightly smaller hole, which isn't the end of the world, because you can just go with a slightly bigger drill piece. So, with that in mind, what we're now going to do is just pop our Dire Avenger to one side. And we're just going to attach our drill piece. Get it in there, like that. And now we're ready to go. Now we want to be very gentle here because we don't want to like pry the model apart. What we want to do though, is we want to find the hole that we've already made, the little pilot hole. And you just want to very gently start drilling around like this. And it should be a lot easier because we've done that little hole. But do just make sure you're pressing the body together because you really don't want it to split apart, but if it does, you can always just add a little bit more glue and repress it. So, you don't want to go all the way through. You just want to, like this, just widen the hole, basically. Like that. And we can just use our little hobby knife as well to just clear out any detritus that we might have in there. 
like so. Then what we're going to do is we're going to grab our entire roll of magnets, which we've got here. And we're just going to check that the magnet will go in, which it should. Like that. What you can then do is just pull it off like so. And you should have this nice clean fit for the magnet, nice and flat against the body. As you can see, it's not overlapping. And because this magnet is so small and the magnets themselves are particularly powerful, powerful enough to hold up the thing, we can see that it absolutely fits there. It's not coming away with pulling the knife. But if you want to, you can dig it out just so you can glue it in. But honestly, these probably won't need any glue on the body because it is such a flush fit. So yeah, there we go. So with those magnets placed on either side of the Dire Avengers body, what we're now going to do is we're going to put the Dire Avengers X arc to one side, like that. Then we're going to take all of our remaining pieces that we need. So we're going to clip them off the sprue. So for example, there's the shimmer shield just there. We need that one. We're also going to grab the X arc tabard as well. Come at this one from a slightly different angle. There we go. Like so. And then we're just going to grab all of our weapons as well. There's one. We need the back pieces. like that and then what we're going to do is we're going to clean off all of those pieces i'm going to use a mold line remover but you could easily use a hobby hobby knife and we're just going to start taking off those any of those mold lines on all of our pieces and then what i like to do is i like to use the knife just to very gently run this over the top of where we might potentially have a mark on the model itself, like that one just there. Whereas over here, I'm just going to take this bit of flash off the ball joint. Like so. I'm just going to hunt for any mold lines that may or may not be there. Just like this. And I'm just going to pop it to one side so that we know what we've done it. So I'm going to pop this one over here and put all of our to-do pieces just over here. Now we're going to go around and get all of these nice and ready. And then we're ready to do some magnetization. So with all of our bits now cleaned up, what we now need to do is we need to select the pieces that are going to be glued on that are going to pose the model. And what I'm talking about is things like the head and these back pieces because this is important for you know where the head placement is so for example on this one that i've already done as you can see the head is facing off this way because we want him to be looking down the sights aiming his pistol so that's exactly what we're going to do is we're going to glue those pieces on now and well we're just going to start with the bits on the back and we're just going to get these on so that we've got an area within which to do the head now of course I'm using plastic glue. You can use any glue that you prefer. You can even use the super glue if you wish. That's how you like to build your models. We're just going to add in the blade. Just there, like that. And then we're going to add in the banner as well. Just let that dry for a couple of minutes. 
So with that dry, as you can see, I accidentally drilled through a little bit too much here, but that's okay because the head is actually gonna cover it up now. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add in our plastic glue just here. Managed to catch it before I drilled all the way through and that would make doing this bit very difficult. But yeah, just accidentally pressed a little too hard there. And then what we're gonna do is I say, we're gonna pose the model now. So we wanna get the head on just like this. And I'm gonna have it looking towards the left again. <laughs> These damn Dire Avengers. So with our Dire Avenger Exarch all nicely posed with his head facing the right way, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna kind of test fit all of our pieces. So we're just going to make sure that we've got a really kind of cool looking miniature by just kind of making sure that we've got it looking good. Yeah, it looks like it to me, particularly with this shuriken catapult. We can also just kind of test it with, let's say, a sword. I think that looks pretty good to me. Like that. Yeah, I'm reasonably happy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the magnets. Now, what we need to do is we need to prep these pieces first. So, the way we do this, as I said, is once we're doing this test fit, we're gonna look at it like that. We kind of know roughly where we wanna make the cut on the ball joint, because we're gonna be getting rid of the ball joint. We're not just gonna be sticking a magnet to the end of it like this, because then it'll be way too long, and his arm will be just kind of out of, out of place. So, what we wanna do, is so once again, just wanna quickly check Check the model like that, so it looks good. And then we're gonna put it to one side and then we're gonna grab our clippers. Here they are. Now, we don't wanna clip off the whole of the ball joint. What we wanna do is we wanna kind of clip off about half of it, but we wanna do this kind of about less than halfway on the ball joint. So we're gonna kind of come at it like that sort of area just there. We're gonna make a little bit of a press like that, just to create a little groove like this. And just check it on both sides that you've got a little groove. So I've got one just there. I've got one just there as well. We're just gonna take our knife, just to widen that out just a little bit, just to make sure we've definitely got it. You just wanna be very careful. If you're a youngster, get a parent to help you with this. Because you don't wanna cut your finger now. Like that. And then we're gonna take our clippers and in the groove we just widen out just a little bit. We're gonna make sure we're sat in it, not like that. Just being very gentle here. There we go. We're in the groove on both sides. So what we're now gonna do is we're just gonna press down. Now you want always wanna do it a little bit less than you think you need to. Because if you go like exactly half of the ball joint, you're gonna end up clipping off the whole of the ball joint. But we're just gonna very gently press down, keeping the piece as steady as possible until we get rid of about half the ball. Like that. See, you just wanna be very careful with that. Just gently apply the pressure until you get through it. Don't, uh, don't just like clip like that. Cause you're just gonna, it's gonna slip off or it'll slip the other way onto the model. So you might end up going like slipping that way. That's why we create the groove. We don't want that to happen. Then what we're gonna do is just gonna smooth out what we've just clippered with the knife. All right, so it's nice and flat. Looks that way to me. And then we're just gonna test it one more time against the model. Like so, yep, looks pretty good. So, what we now wanna do, is we wanna grab our magnet. What we're gonna do, is using our blade, we're gonna just attach the magnet, like that, nice and simple. 
I'm just gonna check that the polarity is the white right way around and you'll just feel it tug until you make contact. Uh, see? So making contact there. So you know it's this side of the magnet that we want. Just make sure. Yep. Like that. So now we're going to put the knife face down. You know it's this way around. I'm going to grab our felt tip pen and our sharpie. I'm just going to add a little dot of it on there like that. So we know that this is the right way around for that magnet to go. Now we can just remove it from the pile. Like so. Simples. So that now done, it's time to attach our magnet to our piece. Now remember, we've got that little marker bit there. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take our super glue now we add a little dot of this onto the piece. There like that. Not very much at all. Pop the super glue to one side. And we're just going to pick up our magnet. We want to make sure that the marker pen side is facing out. And we're just going to very carefully place this on top of the piece. And make sure that it's roughly in the middle which it isn't currently, but it should be just there. There's lots of little movements like that. That looks pretty good. And then we just want to press down like that. And then we're just going to leave that to dry. And it should magnetize because we know that this is the bit that magnetizes to the Dino Avenger. So we're just going to leave it alone for about 15 minutes and then we're going to test it. So with that now done, we've left it to cure for about 15 minutes. And well, as you can see now, it should just snap on. Absolutely no problem like that. And it looks pretty damn cool. Now what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've also done the shuriken pistol on the same hand, which looks pretty awesome like that. Pointing up into the sky, you can see like that, pretty happy with that. And then I've also done the same thing on the shimmer shield there as well. So actually reaching out like that. On the other side, we've done the other shuriken cannon catapult. So it's gonna go like that and like that, which looks pretty damn cool if you ask me. So all that's left, we've done the sword, still drying at the minute. So all that's left to do is with the glaive. Now I thought I'd show you an opposite arm as well because typically what you're gonna do is you're gonna see this paired with something like the shimmer shield, like that. So now what we want to do is we wanna make sure that this is posed correctly based on how we want it. So that is the classic pose there, like that. So we know that based on what we did last time, we're just going to want to get the angle on our cut on the glaive at that sort, this sort of angle just here. So once again, what we're going to do is we're going to take our clippers and we're just going to like sort of around there, just make a little press like that. And we're going to use the knife to just widen out our grooves and then we're going to clipper it. Like so. Make sure that we're in. Wandered out on this side. Should be able to feel it. Yeah, that. And then we're just going to clip. Like 
think so. And there's a little test fit. You can feel goes in there perfectly like that. So with that now done, it's time to assemble our magnets. And once again, we're just going to check that we've got the pull, which we definitely do there. As you can see it's tugging on the Dire Avenger like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab our little Sharpie and we're going to add our mark onto the bit that we want to stick and grab our super glue once again. It's just it's super glue. <laughs> Good shake. Make sure that we're almost ready. As I said, it's very, very thick. So it does just take a little bit of encouragement. But it does let me control, for example, just that tiny little blob there. I'm just going to add this onto the glaive. Like that. I'm going to grab my magnet. from the blade. I'm just going to stick it right in the middle. Just like that. Perfect. So with all of our weapons now magnetized, doing the exact same thing, what we can now do as you can see the final result. I've actually added the little tabard there just to really finish off that model, just using a bit of plastic glue. And well, if we start adding our components like this, and we have the sword here, like that, it's pretty cool. We can remove that one, knock over the everything on the desk. <laughs> Add the shield like that. Got a pretty cool looking pose just there. Can add a shuriken catapult. Like that. Looks like a classic pose right there. We've got the other shuriken catapult. Which we can put down. I'm giving the pistol. <laughs> the combinations are endless. Now, doing this like this, of course, there are very specific builds. Got the shimmer shield as well. Like that. And then last but not least, we have the glaive that we just did. As you can see, he looks pretty dope. Like that. And as you can see, just by sort of Tilting the body and tilting the head, making the angle not quite as extreme on our two X arcs, you get two very different looking guys. For example, we can do that and that, should we wish. Like that. This one we can do like that. Looks pretty cool. <laughs> Very nice. So, a couple of words of advice. Posing the head is really important because you want to make sure that that banner has got the right angle of the dangle. As you can see on this one, I've glued it kind of a little bit further forward because I want him to kind of be leaning into the shot. Whereas this guy, I want to kind of be standing up looking imperious. But posing it with the head absolutely gives you the angle of which to do these. Now doing these ball joints is a little bit difficult. It's very, very hard. Um, so it's not something that I would recommend for beginners. Um, because, you know, it, it's just, it's one of those things. But as I said, when you're going to be doing the clipping of the bits, you want to always do it a little less than you think you might. So not 
not dead on half, a little under half, and that's why we want to create that groove. So we've got the purchase to be able to make the clip. It's very, very important. The marker pen, very important as well for making sure you get the polarity right. You don't want to glue a sword that is the wrong polarity. <laughs> and of course, if you're going to be doing units of 10 Dire Avengers, you do get two opportunities. So don't worry if you mess it up the first time because you do get the same set of weapons in both. But yeah, enjoy your now magnetized Dire Avenger Exarch. They look pretty cool. I think you will agree. Lest we forget, of course, you can always create some monstrosities <laughs> that look somewhat like this. <sighs> Cult of the four-armed cane. <laughs> or six-armed. <laughs> Scream! If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel, and you want to support me further like these legends and bosses on the screen before you, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Alternatively, you can now become a YouTube channel member by heading to the channel page and clicking on the join button just here, just like these absolute bosses have done. And if you just want to shoot me a little thanks, just because you really love this video, you can click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.